it was beginning to end, the Cultural Revolution, when I lost my eyesight, nearly lost my eyesight. Up until the Cultural Revolution, I had made many films, all but one. One I wanted to make so much, a film about two aliens. Once I had met two strangers who came to China from outside, from beyond the Great War to the Middle Kingdom. Ever since then, I've wanted to make a film about them. A man and a woman, lovers, in search of each other. Since the time that the light of day no longer comes through my eyes, I dreamt this film. Within me, I made the film of these two aliens. Now I travel along the Great Wall, following the course of the dragon. Step by step, over many years, I've measured this wall with my body, following the aliens in search of each other. For centuries, to enter China, aliens had to cross this great wall. The ancient boundary that separates life from death, the brink between heaven and hell. Now my friend and I walk along the wall. Our donkey carries our equipment from village to village. When the white flickering light of the projector strikes my face, I begin to tell the story of my film, talking through my pictures, the love story of a man and a woman. Though grown apart, they begin to search for each other step by step, day after day, over and along the Great War of China. She begins to walk towards him from the dragon's head on the shores of the Yellow Sea at Shanghai Guan. He begins to walk towards her from the far west, 
beyond the desert reaches of Jiayuguan at the dragon's tail. journey starts with the first step. On the 30th day of the third month in the year of the dragon, I set off along the great wall towards the east. My first step I made beneath the snow-covered mountains of Xilian Shan at Tao Lai He. The Tao Lai River runs deep down below at the bottom of a giant earth crack. At the canyon's edge, the old world of China began. Above the cliffs, the first signs of the Great Wall. The tip of the dragon's tail sunk deep into the earth. From here, the wall stretches up to Jiayuan Fortress, the impregnable pass under heaven the gate that protected the ancient Silk Road to the west. Finally, here I am, standing on the dragon's head, the beginning, the first path in earth on the Yellow Sea. With my heart full of fear, I am ready to walk into the past and present of a country I don't understand. The legends of the wall talks to me more than historical facts. Here, battle sea and mountain dragons causing tidal waves and earthquakes. Red dragons fight green dragons, fight black dragons. Finally, the mountain dragon wins over the great sea dragon. To be sure that this dragon never returns, the ancient builder sink their ships to press its head back into the water. Before, there was this strong emotional link with Ulai. So walking towards each other was like the power of a magnet. Our story would be the epic struggle of two suffering lovers being drawn to each other. Here, the heaven opened the sea and revealed this path. the first pass on earth. I'm left on my own, my own way, just the bare wall and me. I have to rearrange my thoughts. Why am I now walking this wall? Then, I remember this sentence by John Cage. When I throw I Ching, the answers I like the least are the answers I learn from the most.
walking in an eastern direction following the course of the winding Great Wall. I put my consciousness in the soles of my feet, establishing contact with the lovely magnetic touch of the earth. Step by step, Ipu, Ipu, as the Chinese say, I measure the landscape with my body. The rhythmic swaying, stride and pace will find its harmony. Walk on, walk on. As I pass along the wall, I cross fields in the desert. Encounter farming people, people who work the barren land with ancient tools and ancient methods. Man and woman fighting for a living, living from hand to mouth. I pass on. Here life is at its simplest. People live in burrows inside the yellow earth. They are born and live in the yellow earth. Before they return to the yellow springs, they will be laid back inside the yellow earth. Even in this most remote northwestern region, the least populated part of China, I feel there are always eyes watching. I'm never alone. Shepherds observe me. As I pass a cave hollowed in the wall, a man is knitting. He looks up, his face surprised, asking himself, who is this? This tall blue figure passing by on such giant boots. Where does he come from? Where does he go? There is nothing around for strangers to visit. He must walk far. What a pity for his shoes. Across an alkali desert, the wall remains like ash-gray stalagmites. A herdsman acts strangely. He throws a stone, afraid of me. Am I a beast? Chabcha, chaypa, I hear him shout. I don't understand. He must feel fear. I feel sad that I cannot make myself better understood. I must walk on. Leaving behind friendships I could never make. The wall rises and falls like a huge dragon. 
I climb the dragon's back. I can feel his spine, his bloodstream pulsing under my feet. It is so hard at times that no thoughts are possible. My mind can only think on the next step up. I love the wall's danger. It's ups and downs like real life. It's danger what wakes you up, alerts you. So tired, so weak. The climb quickly gets harder. Every step gets bigger. I try to climb quickly. Stones become looser. can hear engines. All of a sudden, trucks are shooting through the wall. Progress has cut the dragon. I step into silence again. My mind eased. I follow the wall. No thought, no associations. All is quiet in the cold, crisp air. Around me lie islands of snow where shepherds remain frozen, watching. Am I like some strange animal to them? Every encounter I have with people here, innocent people, the stranger I become stranger than innocence. like kneeling down to smile, to show my good intentions. Yet, I have to walk on. People are afraid. People are shy. People I feel want to be friends. I admire these warm-hearted people here, who never saw a stranger. And yet, this inability of making friends remains unsolved. Yes. As strange I have measured the wall with these feelings, the wall and its living presence. A stranger passes, maybe an event for a generation to remember.
now I'm walking the territory of Blue Dragon. To control the dragon's energy, the builders found energy spots, placing towers like acupuncture points along the dragon's spine. Here they place copper pots and cover them with the heaps of stones. The energy still pulses under the mountain and transmits back into my body. I can feel it. I feel I'm so far in the middle of nowhere this feeling gives me fear, but at the same time, indescribable happiness. I feel like a boat overpowered by the sea, like a sailor who throw out his ballast to enter the stream. Here I am now emptying my boat and entering the stream of the Blue Dragon. My mind is frozen, my body in dissolution, flesh and bones all melted together. I'm unconscious of what my body is resting on or what is under my feet. I was born this way, this is the way of the wind like dry leaves falling from the tree. I'm now not sure if the wind rides me or I'm riding the wind. A day different from others, I walk beneath the horizon in a groove framed by two walls. To my right, the ancient Han wall, dusted with snow. To the left, the great Ming wall, compounded of yellow earth. I measured both walls a thousand years apart with the echo of my footsteps bouncing between them. More than 10,000 monks once lived here. Now only a few pagodas loom above the village of Jinchang Shi. Embedded in the mountain valley of Long Shoshan, shielded from the elements, the wall remains intact. 
an interplay of natural geography and man's construction. From the protective shell of the valley, I enter the flats ahead of me. An oasis feeds a hundred camels. My stride has changed. The day is ending. I feel complete, as total as a child. The state of walking has become me. I enter the true desert now, the ever-changing land. The wall is buried beneath my feet, covered by the Gobi sands. Only tips of towers signal my direction. The last remains of the wall today. One other sandstorm and all may vanish. My feet grip hard rock on the mountain of Khalanshan. For me, the only time the wall is made of stone, the highest mountain I have to climb. Buffeted by the winds that now buffet me, shapes ever changing from slow erosion. The spine of the dragon corpse juts out in defiance of the elements. I am the wall, the wall is me. Sound shapes. Giant feet, gods of heaven, may you be safe in your journey. The Yellow River becomes the natural boundary for the Great Wall at Chapoto. 
Ferrymen prepare their rafts to cross the river, blowing air into sheepskins, just enough to make the crossing. From the western bank, I cross the rapids to find the war continuing. I start climbing again. Everything looks so abundant without people. there is the sand. After every summit, there comes the point of going down again. At the end of each day's walk, I leave the wall, I come down through the hills. Slowly, I stop resisting nature. I start accepting uncertainties not planning the day, where to go, how many miles should I still go, where I'm going to sleep, what I'm going to eat. Now, without any daily routine, I'm open to destiny. In those days, there were nine suns in the sky. When one sun set, another rose. So there was daylight all year round. When the god Arlang looked down from heaven, he saw thousands of workers heaving stones, building the great wall across two mountains. Those who stumbled were thrown like bricks into the wall's foundations. So Arlang turned himself into an old gray man and spoke to the commander on the wall. These brutal work will kill all your builders. They cannot work forever under the heat of those nine suns. You must let them rest and refresh themselves by the mountain stream. The commander shouted back, If they rest, how will the emperor's war be finished? Get away, old man, or I'll batter you to death. Then the god Arlan lifted his stick to the heavens and said, Rest, poor builders, refresh yourselves, and I will build this wall. Waving his stick, Arlan levered up two mountains on his back. As each sun rose, he hit it with a mountain. Eight suns tumbled from the sky before Arlan's stick fell shattered into three. A mountain slid off his shoulders, killing the commander. The builders cheered as Arlan dissolved in a gust of wind. So today, the sun we see in the sky above is the one the good god Arlan left. From that time on, there were always nights of rest 
to follow working days for the builders of the wall. Tell him we try many times to make the sound like him, but no success. Um, <coughs> Is that the fish from the river here? This is the the Yes. Mm, very good. Very fresh. Lao, 开始吧。两好，八来八呀，一个一个，一个一个，三个三个，六吹两好，六四。你唱，你唱，再多嘞。啊。With Mr. Liu's bird sound. Still ringing in my ear, for a long time that evening I could not fall asleep. And then, under the golden light of the evening sun, I see an open honey jar a mythical fish in a bed of locusts waiting. Dragon of the East is approaching Firebird of the South. I see Jade Princess smiling to invisible light. A bit of sweat glisten above her lip. In a cloud of fragrance, a strong man prepares his jade for touching. A moon girl holds her hands in expectation, asking the lotus to receive his jewel. The dragon of the east and the firebird of south satisfy the volcanoes and fly together to the land of the great void. From here, I still see the tongues in flames. Slowly, slowly, time passes present into past, past into future. Finding my way on the eastern bank of the Yellow River, I see the wall rising on the plateau high above. Again the wall stretches endlessly ahead of me, yet with no thought of measuring its length, I walk on. An untouched path in front of me, no tracks to the horizon. And if a solitary figure shows, he only comes to cross the wall, never to walk its length. Oh, <laughs> 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 
My movement becomes mechanical. It triggers my awareness. Each step counts. I am in a flight of forward motion. There must be a village close to the wall. On the northern side, a shepherd with his flock. In front of me, a children's castle has been hollowed in a tower. were built for sending signals. Messages could be sent across a thousand miles in an hour. Foot soldiers could fire their powerful crossbows from the parapets. The combination of the sophisticated Chinese crossbow and the Great Wall was certainly the principal stabilizing force in the northern and western border territories. On the newly restored wall, it is hard to feel the old energy lines. On the old unrestored section, I'm sure my feet now walks to the rhythm of the Earth's pulse. This walk is like a broom sweeping my soul. Up here, in the mountains, I feel so lonely, almost like at home in Montenegro. The winter is changing around me into spring. Strong winds are gone. I dreamt I was under Rose Ridge Peak. I was opening the door of the Tower of the Mountain Treasure. I saw in impeccable order 123 gold trinkets set with jewels, 13 strings of pearls, two pale gold plates, 
three satin cushions with a serpent design, 22 embroidered robes, 10 pair of gilded ebony chopsticks, 11 ivory fans, 32 lengths of different silk, three red fox fur hats, one pair of platypus shoes, and two peacock feathers. Something in her eyes reminds me of the story about the little girl Shan, the old man told me. One day, her mother left Shan all alone at home. Suddenly, she heard a loud knock on the door. It was a soldier down from the wall, asking for the needle and a thread. Little Shan hide, but the soldier knowing she was alone, persists. All he wanted, after all, was a needle and a thread. The little girl remembered her mother's black lacquer sewing box, kept under a velvet cushion. Then, staying out of the side, Shan slowly passed the needle and a thread through the hole in the door. After taking the needle and a thread, the soldier pressed his finger back into the hole and touched the finger of the beautiful Shan. The girl was so overcome by the strong feeling that she believed that she had lost her virginity and instantly decided to kill herself. When her mother returned, she discovered a letter explaining what had happened. With one sweep of his sword, the general of the regiment cut off the soldier's head. When the emperor heard the story, he ordered one more tower to be built on the great wall in memory of beautiful Shan. Who killed the dragon? The dragon's corpse pierced by bayonets. These dangerous holes the Red Army dug out on Mao's long march. I don't walk this wall anymore. I'm measuring it with my steps. Every day in the hills exhaust me. I begin to push myself. Wall, and yet more wall, again wall, here and never ending. A bridge between rock and sky.
often I talk to myself. Rising in the soul, descending in the step. Sometimes I dream that I dream that I wake up in another dream, walking and talking to my shadow. My walk become more and more an inward journey, a way to strengthen myself for a new life without Ulai. I return to solitude, conducting the blue sky down to the yellow earth. Walking in the sand, leaving traces only for seconds. I don't think. I don't know. I walk on. At times I see graves dug into the slopes of the wall, dug into the wall's good earth. shrine recently erected. Two bells, one a modern replica, the other a battered old survivor of the Cultural Revolution. Symbol of a regained fate. Rounding a tower today, my wall of bricks and stones has become a wall of sand and pebbles. The recent rain has washed away the earth and reveal bones that are clearly human. In this territory of the white and black dragon, they believed that the wall could only be put together with a human sacrifice. I pass the stone inscription, those who pass here become immortal. <laughs> Here, nothing seems to change. Like the Chinese legend says, woman is here to hold up half the sky. I have always wondered who in China holds up the other half. How strange today that I saw these bones. Tomorrow I will meet Ulai. What do I feel? Emptiness? No memories? Walking this ragged line of pounded earth surrounded by the fields, I feel that my wall loses its power here. It feels dead. It looks more and more like the burial ground of the great dragon. They say the head of the dragon is in the sea, the body in the mountains, and its tail lies buried in the desert. I begin to think of Ulai. We will meet on the hill of Taoist, Buddhist and Confucian shrines. I feel today one big chapter of my life is ending. Tomorrow we will meet to say goodbye.
how long have we been preparing for this day? I remember last year that Ulai proposed a Chinese wedding on the wall and I refused. We fought, he left me. I searched the streets of Amsterdam, but I didn't find him. Then, the feeling of pain and sadness. Now, if I ask myself, I don't feel anything. Sleep is not coming to me. It looks like my old soul is awake forever. And now I'm going to meet him. Today I have a premonition. At once I feel my meeting with Marina. From behind the temple I see her across the ridge, walking towards me. I have this recurring dream. I climb and climb, then reach the bridge. I cross halfway and then can't go no farther. I face the mountain of Aulangshan. Marina waves her flag. Today it's nearly 90 days I have been walking on the brink. Bing Chung, the border wall as the locals call it. Walking on that edge which separates the inside world from the outside world. Life from death. Below me I see a furled white flag. Remember, surrender. After working and living together for 12 years, Marina and I were separated for the first time for 90 days. Each of us experienced being a single entity again, accumulated our own experiences that may last forever. 12 years of happiness, of sorrow, rushed back at me. 12 years of work across the world. We are so together in the past. So apart now in the present. And here we meet. We embrace. It's strange. Two aliens meeting. Estranged from each other and strangers to each other. Ulai says that it reminds him of the Gorgiev story of the meeting of remarkable men. I can hardly speak. He speaks continuously about himself, his work, his experience. Tell me about it. In the first moment of our meeting, in one split of second, he held my finger in his hand. At that very moment, I felt togetherness again. The intensity of the feeling we once had for each other returned. Somehow, this finger contact brought back a feelings for a moment, a very short one, intense feeling of peace, and beauty. <laughs> I'm so glad that we didn't give up this walk. We need a certain form of ending. After this huge distance of walking towards each other, we met unhappily. It is a very human, in a way. It is more dramatic more like a film ending than actually having this romantic story of two lovers. Let me do it over. Marina. Because in the end, you are really alone, whatever you do. Did they ever really find each other? Did they succeed or fail? 
I will never know.